today I'm trying something a little bit different. Uh, as you can see, it is morning. <laughs> and I thought that it could be fun to share a little slice of what a typical day here in Baja has been looking like for me because it's been so drastically different than when I was back at home in the States. Mornings here are slow and peaceful. We're woken up by a lullaby of waves, gentle boat motors serenade us from the shore, and I'm using all this floral language because that's truly how it feels, like something out of a storybook. A lot of times you'll hear people say van life is not as romantic as we make it look, and I agree with that a lot of times, but down here, that actually seems to be the case. Without fail, whether I'm in Baja, Utah, California, or Oregon, I always do one thing. That's make coffee. And brush my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Now, this is probably gonna sound so silly, especially to people who either don't drink coffee or just like drink, I don't know, Maxwell House in the morning, no shade. Uh, but last week I ran out of my favorite beans from my friend's shop in San Diego and my pour over filters. And it's not that those aren't available in Baja or in Mexico, but I haven't found them yet. Um, definitely not the beans, but at least the filters. So I've switched back to Old Faithful and I'm just doing my AeroPress in the mornings now with some generic beans. And I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of thrown my routine off. My coffee tastes very different in the mornings now compared to what it was like a week ago. And it's been a good reminder to let go of things, not hold on to them so tightly, and that change is okay, even if it's just in a small way like this. Coffee poured, teeth brushed, all the essentials done for the morning, right? <laughs> but the next thing that I normally do is actually plug in my solar panels and sit them upright because the winds here have been super variable. One of my biggest concerns is leaving my solar panels in overnight or during wind gusts and having them blow over, fly away, or break. And so at night, I've been setting them down flat, as you guys can see here, which allows them to get some sunlight, but definitely not an optimal amount. So I'm going to set these up and check in to see how the Blue Eddie's doing after running my Starlink all night. Okay, so normally the panels, even when they're lying down flat like this, get more than just 11 watts of solar input on a day like today, which quickly made me wonder what was wrong. But with a quick step back, I soon realized that Tara had made herself a bed directly on top of one of the panels. Now, obviously this isn't ideal or recommended by the manufacturer, but it does prove my point as to how durable these panels are. Whether they've been picked up by wind gust or laid on repeatedly by a 70 pound dog, they prevail. There we go, 190 watts, much better. Honestly, one of my favorite parts about getting dressed here in the morning is that you only have to do it halfway. I'm just here with friends, so it doesn't matter if I wear the same thing every day. I just throw on a bathing suit top, slap on some sunscreen, put on a pair of shorts, and enjoy my day. Because it's only 7.30 here, and somehow it's already like 72 degrees. On the topic of sunscreen though, porque soy una gringa, I am not that much closer to the equator necessarily, but I'm out by the water all day, the sun is high, there are no clouds out, and I'm a white girl, as I just said. So I need a lot of sunscreen and before I came down here, I knew that it would probably be a little bit more difficult in small towns to find something that was made for people with lighter skin like myself because I'm not necessarily the target audience in the more rural towns especially. Now this does, for all of the reef safe aware folks, it does have titanium dioxide in it. So when I put it on my skin, 
I wait a very long time before going in the water. This is the first thing I put on my skin in the morning. I don't go in the water for usually at least an hour or two, and then I'll reapply after I get back out because I don't want this immediately coming off of my skin and going into the water. Because if you didn't know, it can be harmful and even potentially what is contributing to the dying off of coral reefs in our oceans. But something really cool I wanna show you about this bottle and the reason I do keep it in the fridge and not just out of my counter. I'll be right back. I left that in real time so you guys could see how quickly it actually happens. Do you see how pink the bottle is starting to turn? And that was maybe five or six seconds in morning light. Um, but this indicates that there are harmful UV rays in the atmosphere right now that could be damaging my skin and also damaging the sunscreen. So all that said, I'm gonna slap some of this on and get outside to journal for the morning. I'm actually gonna use you all as a mirror really quick. Probably looks so silly because it's like not cool or cute to be white, like zinc white. <laughs> But you know what, if it prevents skin damage and helps me stay out in the sun longer in my life, I'm here for it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. This morning began as all others have lately, slow and intentional. The pace of the peninsula has encouraged me to slow down, to move with the tides and rest with the moon. A part of me knew that this would be the case when I arrived. Maybe that's why I resisted its pull all these years. I've never been very good at slowing down. Often I find myself moving at a pace just slightly ahead of my peers, finding some sort of egotistical fulfillment at being the best. But what is the best anyways? The person who is the fastest, most consistent, most precise, the first one out, or the last man standing. I'm beginning to realize that it is none of those things. And even if it were, what would it matter? I'm beginning to think it would not. As much as I wish that this weather, this calm, beautiful, like lakeside almost weather had been our norm, um, we really have not had a day this nice since getting here. Almost every day, especially mid-morning, the winds pick up. And that's obviously still a possibility. It is only 8.30. You caught it on a good day, which means the wetsuit and my hilarious looking snorkel gear is gonna make an appearance today. Most people that I know are actually already much further south than I am right now. Uh, and they all wanted to head down to the like always calm beautiful translucent water this bay is not necessarily that but part of the reason why i didn't want to leave this bay which is known as bahia de los angeles i'm trying to get my pronunciation better while i'm here is because of the biodiversity we have already seen and been stung by jellyfish dolphins not stung by them but seen dolphins i've heard that there are rays and even whales certain times of year in addition to obviously a lot of fish so i'm hoping that with this weather and clarity i'll be able to see something fun this morning we'll see obviously i'm not uh counting on seeing anything cool but how nice would that be not gonna lie though i'm a little bit bummed to be doing this to my hair right now because last night i took a 45 minute yes 45 minutes shower i guess you could call it to wash my hair in my sink because showers are not very plentiful here and i didn't want to fill my shower bag or use my outside shower out of fear of using too much water so i just rinsed my hair in the sink only used about a gallon which is exactly why i did it but now first thing in the morning <laughs> gonna go ruin that while i get all this set up and get in the water i'm actually gonna charge the camera because somehow with all the filming i've done this morning i'm already down to 40 percent so i'm gonna go plug you guys into the blue Eddy and switch over to the gopro
Well, I might look absolutely insane, but I think this is gonna be a good time. Well, I'm certainly not gonna win any awards for fashion today, but hopefully this works. Oh. Well, so far, no um, no fish <laughs> or rays, but I almost went head first into a jellyfish, so that would have been something. So obviously I've only been here for a little over a week, but in that time I've already had to go to the grocery store or small market or mercado twice, which means that most of my pantry items now are either staples or things that I've purchased down here. And as nervous as I was about that, I guess not nervous, but apprehensive maybe, as I was about that because I just didn't know what would and wouldn't be available, I've actually really been enjoying getting creative, especially because I do still have a lot of the condiments and basics that I normally would in the States. This morning, I'm going to be kind of blending all of the above. I have some eggs. I have this really delicious, from Trader Joe's, crunchy chili onion oil, I guess it would be called. I'm going to put this down first. I bought some queso panea the other day at a mercado here, and I think it's going to go really nicely to do that like chili oil feta combo that I've seen a lot on the internet. Um, crack some eggs over it, put some beans on the side, and eat it with a tortilla. So let's make some breakfast. <laughs> guys this on the beach under the sun it just hits different down here all the ingredients are super simple i'm sure you can most likely access all of them wherever you are so you don't have to be at the beach in baja to make it it does feel a little bit better here i feel like but Either way, I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. And while I do, I want to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Blue Eddy. Now, if you've been around since last year, you already know how life-changing having a Blue Eddy power station on the road full-time has been for my situation. As a longtime user of their products, from the AC60 and B80, now up to the AC200L and PV200 system, I've been thoroughly impressed by the capability of their portable power stations. For the past few months, I've been using a combination of the AC200L and two of their PV200 solar panels to power my off-grid internet around the clock without fail. Utilizing its 2400 watt max output and 11 versatile charging ports,
lights. I not only can run my Starlink 24 seven, as long as I'm charging throughout the day, but I'm also able to easily power my laptop, my camera, my phone, SOS devices and other miscellaneous small electronics all at the same time, which means I never have to sacrifice comfort or safety on the road. Now, obviously we all have a different set of electronics. And so I'll go ahead and insert an infographic here from the team over at Blue Eddy to give you an idea of how long you could power your electronics off grid using the AC200L. Now this high power output would be useless without a solid way to recharge, of which I do in three main ways. When I'm off grid on a faraway beach in Baja or in the mountains of Oregon, I can quickly set up my two PV200 solar panels at camp, orienting them throughout the day to ensure maximum sun exposure and power. On long drive days or when sunlight is at a minimum, which thankfully isn't much of a problem here, I appreciate the AC200L's cigarette lighter capability, which allows me to charge the station off of my truck's alternator while I drive. And finally, for those rare times like over the holidays, when I'm staying in an Airbnb, or the more frequent trips that I take to cafes and breweries, the station's fast charging abilities shine, taking in over 2000 watts of input from a standard household outlet and charging the station from just zero to 80% in 45 minutes or a full charge in under two hours. So whether you're headed to Baja like myself this winter and are looking for around the clock internet and backup power, or maybe you just wanna charge a variety of high powered electronics off grid, you can head to the link down in the description down below to learn more about the AC200L and PV200 system. And thank you again to Blue Eddy for sponsoring today's video. Well, I don't know about you guys, but this morning already feels like it's been two years, which kind of exhausts me, but also is really nice because I do still have so much time left in the day. It's actually still only 1130 right now. And so with this last half hour of morning, technically, I'm gonna go ahead and break out the planner. And I wanted to talk really quickly about a few exciting things that are coming to this page slash just my platform in general. Um, one of which I am gonna get a good start on today, I'm hoping, and that is is creating a newsletter. I'm sure a lot of you are wondering why you would subscribe to a newsletter when you can just come to YouTube every week and see what's going on. But there are a couple of reasons why I'm starting this. One, I have a few new exciting launches, let's call them, that I can't talk more about yet, but that are coming in early spring of this year. Now, the way to know about those, other than following my social media and seeing when they launch, so basically to get the insider knowledge before it actually happens, is going to be on this newsletter. Additionally, I have committed myself this year to publishing at least, at least, maybe more, but not less, two blog posts per month. The first of which I'm hoping to get out later this week, which yes, I realize it's about to be February, so this month will only be one, but I've just come back from my break, and so it's the best I can do for now. Progress, not perfection. And finally, it'll be a great way to just connect on a deeper basis. I know some of you are patrons, which thank you as always for your support. It's not necessarily about the money, but the money does help more than anything. It's just a way for me to connect deeper with all of you. And so when I do have exciting things coming, like just last month, we had holiday cards go out. There'll be a small plug in there as well. So if you decide that you want to become a patron that month to sign up for these exclusive benefits, like live chats, which is coming up in the next few weeks, holiday cards or other exclusive content, there will be a link in the newsletter to do so. I won't be spamming you. I will likely be doing one or fewer a week, maybe even bi-weekly to start and just get in a good flow. But that's my goal today is to get that platform set up and my first newsletter out this coming week. So if this all sounds like something you'd be interested in, I'll go ahead and drop a link to sign up for the newsletter down below. And it'll also be available on my website, which if you haven't checked that out, now would be a good time to do so as well. Ooh. 
well, just like that, 30 minutes later, thanks to my friend Tegan and her recommendation for Flowdesk, the newsletter, at least the bones of it, are done, which means you'll be able to find a link down in the description below to sign up and learn more about launches that I have coming up later this year. And on that note, thinking about the future, I was just dreaming of some 5 p.m. margaritas. Don't worry, I'm not gonna have them right now at noon. I do have more that I need to get done. But in order to do that, I need my blender. And in order to use my blender, I prefer when possible to use the Bluetti so I'm not stripping power from the camper itself. But it's windy out and I don't wanna go check to see how much power it actually has or how much it will have later today. So I disconnected to the Bluetooth app and saw that it's still pulling in 260 watts and is at 99%. Even having charged this camera, my GoPro, and powering my Starlink throughout the entire morning. Which means more lime blended margaritas for all. All of that said though, this is a morning video, so I'll save the tequila talk for later. I want to take a moment again to thank the sponsor of today's video and our adventures on the road, Blue Eddy, and for all of you for being here for this journey with us. So excited to take you along as we explore more of the peninsula in the coming weeks and months. But until then, I hope you all enjoyed this week's video, and I'll see you next Sunday. Bye. Break time? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Enjoy. Thank you. <laughs>